A very warm and a happy morning for my all dear friends. So today's talk is on IVF process step by step. Well, the term IVF looks very complicated, but today here I am there to make this term very simple and to make you understand the process in a very simplified way by giving you a step by step procedure that is involved in this entire journey. Now the very first step is that of a fertility expert consultation. The purpose of this is so that the, your doctor can understand the cause of infertility, can review your previous fertility records, your previous fertility treatments. Based on your evaluations, based on the cause of infertility, can chalk out a plan for your treatment. You can discuss the various concerns or the myths that you have uh, regarding the treatment plan proposed for you. It is a good time to start with the preconceptional supplementations. Also, this is a great time to ask for certain pre-procedure investigations, which may be mandatory. And at the end, once everything, all the pros, cons, the success rates and everything has been explained to you, you will be asked to undertake a consent for undergoing the procedure. Step two is a pre-treatment. This is optional. It is not meant for everyone. It is uh, recommended for certain group of females wherein we are trying to have a little better egg quality yield when we actually start the IVF process. The pre-treatment generally happens a month prior to taking your IVF procedure and you're given medications in the form of certain tablets or injections or even as transdermal gels. You do not need much or many frequent visits at this time. The third step when you actually enter into the IVF cycle is the ovarian stimulation. So typically once you start your full flow of your periods, you are called to the clinic on the first or the second day, when a certain blood test to look out for basic hormones and an ultrasound to ensure that everything from the previous cycle has washed out are undertaken. Once we get a green signal from both these tests, then the stimulation starts with daily administration of gonadotropin injections. Now usually you will be given injections for a period of 7 to 11 days. Based on the type of injections that have been recommended, you can be given the injections either intramuscular or subcutaneous. Largely, the injections have to be taken at the same time. At some point of time, another injection which is a GnRH analog, either an agonist form or an antagonist form would be brought into the protocol. The purpose is that we do not want any premature ovulation happening before the egg retrieval. Now you'll be called to the clinic a number of times to see how the cycle is going and how can it be assessed with a simple follicular study through the ultrasound and if required some blood tests. The next step comes of ovulation trigger. So once the egg follicle reaches a size of about 17 to 18 millimeter, you'll be administered the next medication which is called as the ovulation trigger, again available as an injectable form. The purpose is that you want to facilitate the final step of the egg maturation and also you want to time your egg retrieval procedure. The next step is of egg retrieval and semen collection. So typically 34 to 36 hours after the ovulation trigger injection, the egg retrieval process is conducted. This is a daycare procedure wherein you will be called on the same day to the hospital. All the instructions of do's and don'ts would be given to you by the staff a day prior to the procedure. The, you are given a very small um, IV anesthesia and generally eggs are retrieved by a transvaginal route wherein we uh, put in a needle under an uh, USG guidance and aspirate all the follicles. The procedure is associated with very minimal bleeding and very mild pain post the procedure. At the same time, we asked your husband to give us a self-ejaculated semen sample and after an observation for a couple of hours, the patient is sent back home. The next step is that of a fertilization and the embryo growth. Now once the embryo, sorry, the eggs and the sperms have come to the embryologist, the embryologist does the grading for the quality of eggs and the sperms. Now one sperm is, uh, one egg is placed with about 50,000 or more sperms in a culture dish and incubated in a uh, lab for next 24 hours. This procedure is called as IVF. 
However, there would be some couples who would need a more sophisticated technique which is called as ICSI. Over here, only the mature eggs are picked up. They are separated from their surrounding cells and with the help of a microinjection needle under a very high power magnification, one sperm is injected into one egg. Now all these injected eggs are again placed in a culture dish in an incubator and next day after at a predetermined time, the embryologist looks for signs of fertilization. The resultant embryos are now grown for a period of 3 to 5 days under the best possible culture conditions and they are graded for their quality at the respective time. The next step or the most crucial step of this entire journey is the embryo transfer. Now again embryo transfer is a daycare procedure and generally about 1 to 2 top quality embryos depending on multiple factors and the consensus between you, the clinician and the embryologist are transferred into the womb and this happens under an ultrasound guidance. You really do not need admission for the same and generally this procedure does not require anesthesia, it does not lead to any kind of a pain. The next one is a luteal phase. This is a phase of 14 days where you are given progesterone with or without estrogen supplementation for next 14 days and you are given medications in the form of oral tablets, vaginal tablets or even injections. You are also given a list of the do's and don'ts that have to be taken in this period. And the last step or the day which we wait for the most is the day of pregnancy test. About 14 days later, your clinician would guide you to take a simple blood pregnancy test to see the results. I hope I have given enough justice in explaining you and making things easy. However, if you still have any doubts, please feel free to connect with me at Apollo Fertility Thane. Thank you. Thank you.